Chapter Six of The Man Who Found Out A Nightmare by Algernon Blackwood. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six An hour later they passed back into the front room again. The sun was already behind the houses opposite, and the shadows began to gather. I went off easily, Laidlaw asked. You were a little obstinate at first. But though you came in like a lion, you went out like a lamb. I let you sleep a bit afterwards. Dr. Stephen kept his eyes rather steadily upon his friend's face. What were you doing by the fire before you came here? he asked, pausing in a casual tone, as he lit a cigarette and handed the case to his patient. I, let me see, oh, oh, I know, I was worrying my way through poor old Ebor's papers and things. I'm his executor, you know. Then I got weary and came out for a whiff of air. He spoke lightly and with perfect naturalness. Obviously he was telling the truth. I prefer specimens to papers. He laughed cheerily. I know, I know, said Dr. Stephen, holding a lighted match for his cigarette. His face wore an expression of content. The experiment had been a complete success. The memory of the last two hours was wiped out utterly. Laidlaw was already chatting gaily and easily about a dozen other things that interested him. Together they went out into the street, and at his door Dr. Stephen left him with a joke and a wry face that made his friend laugh heartily. "'Don't dine on the professor's old papers by mistake,' he cried as he vanished down the street. Dr. Laidlaw went up to his study at the top of the house. Halfway down he met his housekeeper, Mrs. Fewings. She was flustered and excited, and her face was very red and perspiring. "'There have been burglars here,' she cried excitedly, "'or something funny. "'All your things is just anyhow, sir. "'I found everything all about everywhere.' She was very confused. In this orderly and very precise establishment it was unusual to find a thing out of place." "'Oh, my specimens!' cried the doctor, dashing up the rest of the stairs at top speed. "'Have they been touched, or—' He flew to the door of the laboratory. Mrs. Fewings panted up heavily behind him. "'The laboratory ain't been touched,' she explained breathlessly. "'But they smashed the library clock, and they've hung your gold watch, sir, on the skeleton's hands. And the books that weren't no value they flung out of the window just like so much rubbish. And they must have been wild drunk, Dr. Laidlaw, sir.' The young scientist made a hurried examination of the rooms. Nothing of value was missing. He began to wonder what kind of burglars they were. He looked up sharply at Mrs. Fewing standing in the doorway. For a moment he seemed to cast about in his mind for something. Odd, he said at length. I only left here an hour ago, and everything was all right then. Was it, sir? Yes, sir. She glanced sharply at him. Her room looked out upon the courtyard, and she must have seen the books come crashing down, and also have heard her master leave the house a few minutes later. "'And what's this rubbish the brutes have left?' he cried, taking up two slabs of worn gray stone on the writing-table. "'Bath brick or something, I do declare.' He looked very sharply again at the confused and troubled housekeeper. Throw them on the dust heap, Mrs. Fewings, and uh, let me know if anything is missing in the house, and I will notify the police this evening. When she left the room, he went into the laboratory and took his watch off the skeleton's fingers. His face wore a troubled expression, but after a moment's thought it cleared again. His memory was a complete blank. I suppose I left it on the writing table when I went out to take the air, he said and there was no one present to contradict him. He crossed to the window and blew carelessly some ashes of burned paper from the sill, and stood watching them as they floated away lazily over the tops of the trees. End of chapter 6 End of The Man Who Found Out a Nightmare by Algernon Blackwood This story was recorded by Phil Chenevere.